we start at Chelsea and the latest on the future of N'Golo Kante. Ade, what's the latest? Yeah, so what we do know right now is Inter Milan want to sign N'Golo Kante from Chelsea and Chelsea seem prepared to let the former PFA Player of the Year leave. Although Inter right now have a very limited transfer budget and only in a position to complete swap deals. Uh, so that's, that's going to be difficult. Uh, the question is, if Chelsea were happy to do a swap deal, who would they swap Kante with? Let's also not forget Inter are managed by former Chelsea boss Antonio Conte. And there has been a fault in the past of it being difficult for Chelsea to do business with their former manager. So just to summarise, Inter want Kante. Kante looks set to leave or allowed to leave by Chelsea. Will they get a deal across the line before the end of the transfer window? We'll soon wait and find out. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, we've talked about Antonio Conte and, and the relationship that he had with Chelsea, and it was, a, it was an acrimonious departure, really, from there. They have done business, though, with Antonio Conte, with Victor Moses going there mm. uh, in the winter window. JD, why would Chelsea allow Conte to leave? Uh, football is so ruthless, Dave. I mean, it was only two years ago, there was no confusion around pundits, fans, everybody alike. Kante was probably considered the best defensive midfielder in the world. He was the, the cheat code. Rate. I'm he telling the you, the was. work rate, the interceptions, the distance covered, in all of those stats, Dave, he was second to none to no one in the Premier League. There is no confusion about the value that he had at that moment in time. We then fast forward because obviously he won success at Leicester and Chelsea, who could forget that. But then he's changed his position tactically to fit in with a new system of a new manager and his value suffers because of it. I, I just don't understand because you see all of those players coming in, but that valuable experience that Kante has, as Ade alluded to, PFA Player of the Year in 17, that's also a man that won a World Cup. That respect around the changing room is going to be needed for a lot of those new players coming in. So I don't understand why, of all the players that you have, on that Chelsea conveyor belt, as they love to call it, Kante would be one of the players that you'd be willing to let go. Yeah, I mean, we, we did sign Cool Cell, didn't we, uh, last week, I think it was. Chelsea fans had a long, long list of players that they were tweeting into us on their cell list. But yeah. I don't remember seeing Angolo Kante being one of those players. So, I mean, JD mentioned it there about football being fickle. Do we, is, is Kante still an elite player? Um, he's an elite player if you don't play him at right wing. He's an elite, elite player if you don't try and play him in a number 10 position. He is, as JD alluded to, one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, and he still is that. If you play him in that position, you're going to get a lot of service from uh, N'Golo Kante for years to come. Um, I'm going to reel off a couple of his awards and accolades. 2016-17 PFA Player of the Year, like JD says. 2017 French Player of the Year. 2018 World Cup winner with France. An integral part of that team. He wasn't a squad member. He was starting. In 2019-20, though, only played 28 times for Chelsea. A lot of that, though, was due to injuries. 53 times in 18-19, 48 times in 17-18. I think the problem for Angalo Kante is that he's played under three different managers. And all of those managers seem to ask him to do something different. Conte seemed to get the best out of him because Conte played him as a defensive midfielder and a ball winner. And that's what he does. I think it's silly to Chelsea to let him go. I don't think they've got anything like that, anything like him at Chelsea. And I think it'll be a mistake to let him go to Inter Milan. But with all the incomings at Chelsea, people do have to be let go. But Kante shouldn't be one of those. Absolutely not. I remember when Kante first came to Leicester and they, they played him on the left wing and that, that soon changed. But you are right. Mauricio Sarri played him a little bit further forward to get his pressing ability higher at the pitch to win the ball back higher. And he has had to alter his style somewhat, hasn't he, under those different managers. But I wonder, has, has the game changed? Do midfields need more than just a ball winner now? Kante isn't known particularly for his progressive passes or being able to contribute in the final third. So have Chelsea already got a player there in Mateo Kovacic who did that extremely well last season? I think in one instance, Dave, I understand exactly what you're saying. Football has changed slightly. But at the same time, I think there'll be a lot of defensive midfielders right now that will allude to what Claude Makélélé has the term man and done for football at the same time. And in pro producing a position which is so unique and so important, bear in mind, when I started watching football, and probably when Ade started watching football as well, 4-4-2 well, four, 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 <laughs> four, four, was considered the norm as a formation. Yeah. The defensive midfielder position became so important during that time because it actually gave an imbalance to other teams and gave the extra midfielder within every single sort of formation. And at that moment in time, Claude McAlealy, as we spoke about earlier, coined it. 
And midfielders afterwards have come after in the same sort of mould to turn around and embody it and take it further. And to think that football has changed or that position is no longer important, I think that would be kind of irresponsible for us. And has it changed that much? I'm, again, we're talking three years ago, this guy was considered the best defensive midfielder in the world. I mean, look at Liverpool. Fabinho, they went and got a defensive midfielder. You look at Everton, Alan, a defensive midfielder. They also added De Kure. Teams know how vital that is, especially if you think about Chelsea, how many attacking forward players they've got. They've got so many. They need defensive midfielders to cover those attacking players. Chilwell's going to be bombing on. They hope Aspilicueta can still bomb on. If not, um, they need a defensive midfielder, basically, to make, to make sure all that works. And I think it doesn't work if Kante's not there. Well, anybody who turns up to training in a, in a, in a battered Mini Cooper is, is good enough for me to play in, <laughs> play in that midfield. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on Angolo Kante. Uh, just to reiterate, what we know is that Inter Milan want to sign the player. Uh, we await to try and find out exactly what Chelsea's position on N'Golo Kante is. Someone who we, we spoke to Frank Lampard about yesterday is the goalkeeper situation. Um, Frank Lampard was quite coy on that yesterday. He didn't want to talk about Mendy because he said he was a Wren player. Chelsea fans are going to be wondering this morning what is going on with the signing or potential signing of Mendy. Addy, just bring us up to date with what we know so far. Yeah, um, well, according to um, RMC in France, that's RMC Sport in France, Mendy has agreed personal terms on a five-year deal with Frank Lampard's side, who uh, have been extremely active during the transfer window. However, those reports also claim that the Premier League giants are still sort of £7.4 million short of Wren's £25.9 million valuation. Um, just a few stats on him. Nine clean sheets and 24 appearances. Conceded only 0.79 goals per game. You compare that with Kepa, who's conceded 1.41 goals per game. So that's a, a, massive, this a massive difference, right? <laughs> His save percentage is 78.4%. Mm. Third best in the league. Kepa's was 54.5%, the worst save percentage in the Premier League. Mendy's also very comfortable with the ball at his feet as well. Very good distribution. So, look, Chelsea will be hoping to get that alight, a goal. Sorry, get that goalkeeper over the line. Chelsea fans will be hoping they get him over the line as well. Fantastic goalkeeper. And his rise in the last four or five years has been immense. Great goalkeeper. Chelsea will be hoping to get this deal done very, very soon. Addy, I just I look at that Mendy deal and I just actually think that he could actually be bought in to challenge Kepa. Because sometimes, you know, when you're elite, especially with the huge valuation that Kepa had, sometimes you there's ways that you need to get a player back to playing his best. And mm. standing at six foot six, a commanding presence that he is, he, we saw how much he dominated his own box last year. He could come in and actually they could learn off one another. There's, there's elements of that competitiveness in having a goalkeeper that is very similar, of a similar stature, similar quality mm. coming in that will raise your own game and I think that's where Kepa could benefit and obviously of course Chelsea if it wasn't for the Euros being at the back end of the season I, I could see Kepa standing trying to fight for his place Kepa wants to be in that Spanish squad he knows he needs to play games that's why I can see Kepa going out on loan just because he needs games to force himself back into the, the Spanish squad if it wasn't for the Euros I, I'm with you I think he would stay and fight but because the Euro has been at the back end of the year, I think he goes out on loan. Dave, I just want to make one quick point. I know you're, you're being pushed, but like, just, I knew just, you was gonna come just understand this. Just understand on. this, because Petr Cech's connection with both clubs as well. Obviously, we know his connection with Rennes, that he spent two years before he joined Chelsea. We know the command that he has over Chelsea at this moment in time. Just think about that close connection and how much he would influence on this deal and how important that could be and whether or not Mendy ends up a Chelsea player.